Hello folks, today I'll be talking for a little bit about drought and dry hot summer climate such as ours and some interesting aspects to that. So to start off, I wanted to show you those random deep purple spots here by our outdoor sink and here as well and some of, the, some of you may recognize that uh, those are bird poop and immediately the deep purple color signifies to me that the birds have start, started eating the elderberries which means that the elder has started ripening now and even though the elderberries are used for food from the birds, all the wild birds around here. They are not preferred food. And they eat them mostly out of desperation. You can see that this branch has been almost been picked clean and the, bird, uh, the birds are smart enough to uh, recognize when the berries are still green and not fully ripened. And here they're already eaten off almost all of the fruit on the branch. Another piece of the puzzle can be seen here, even though not easily seen, but if you take a closer look, you will see that the whole area where I'm standing, the whole ground is covered with hundreds, probably thousands of those uh, seeds, which are wild plum seeds. Everything here is covered with those wild plum seeds. I'm sure they're in the thousands. Lots and lots of them. And all of those came out of this large wild plum tree here on the fence line, which is uh, kind of intertwined up there with the mulberry. But this wild plum is interesting because it has a certain property that sets it apart from the other wild plums. Down here, just a few meters lower, you can see that this wild plum has most of its fruit on the tree and they seem untouched by the birds and on the ground. Also, lots of fruit laying around. And there's a reason for this, and I'll show you another dark-skinned wild plum here while we are walking and talking. And the reason for that is that most of the wild plums which grow here, they have very thick skin on the fruit, which is also very sour. And the firm of the wild plums, uh, the flesh of the wild plums, is very firm. It's stiff or hard, even when they are uh, ripe, such as those. Look at the amount of fruit set on those wild plums. They can still be used for stuff like jelly, but we're trying to not make too much preserves with sugar, and uh, they are not sweet enough to be preserved with, uh, without any sugar. The jelly won't be particularly sweet. You can see that how dark, almost black, like an olive, this one is. And it's very firm. Of course, the pit is not separating on none of those uh, wild trees. And those uh, have not been eaten almost at all. The one that I showed you early, uh, just a couple of minutes ago, with all of the fruit eaten and the seeds on the soil, on the ground, it has a very thin skin and when it starts to ripen, the flesh of the plum becomes mushy, like a marmalade or like a jam. So it seems that the birds are uh, lacking sources of water and food, because in other years they very rarely touch the plums on those trees. But it seems that this year they're probably getting desperate and so they 
uh, came up here. This is an apple with some apples left on it. And this is a wild plum, um, which I grafted with, uh, I think, three or four varieties. And above it, you can see it's maybe six meters up. This whole plum, it had a lot of yellow plums on it. And it's been stripped clean by the birds, mostly blackbirds and starlings, but all kinds of other wild small birds. And they came here to eat and to get their water needs satisfied by the fruit. And they ate the fruit so completely that they left just the bare seeds here on the ground drop. And the reason for that is that we have uh, been in a drought, I'd say for a few years now, but most recently this summer. Let's uh, walk a little bit upwards and I'll show you some more signs of this here in the orchard. So the last uh, good rains we had were in June, in, in the whole of July and August. We had only one rain event, which was only 20 millimeters. So we basically got as uh, little rain as a desert. But still, due to our microclimate, plants grew, trees grew well. But the problem is that uh, due to our problematic spring weather, there was lots of windstorms and rainstorms and very changeable temperatures. Many of the fruit trees dropped their fruit or didn't get well, well pollinated at all. So there was not much fruit left on the trees. The mulberries up here, which are a main food source for birds up to mid to late July even, at uh, some of the more secluded branches, they had very few fruit set, maybe 20% of what is normal. None of the plums which are cultivated, such as this one and the others down there, got uh, any fruit. The cherries, wild and cultivated, they also didn't get much fruit. Maybe just a couple of kilos out of a tree, which usually yields a hundred. So if you go down a list of fruit trees, you'll see that uh, many of the trees didn't really get any fruit and we also didn't get much small fruit in the wild. So the birds are probably getting desperate and eating the elderberries and uh, uh, fr the fruit of the pl wild plum trees as well. Now I'm getting closer to the soil here and you can see that this usually is a thick uh, carpet of wild grasses and I mowed it four times in June alone it uh, grows up to 10 centimeters per week when we have abundant moisture. But right now it's starting, well, not really right now, but in the recent weeks, it has started to, started to open cracks up, which is typical of our high clay soil, our verti soil, which you probably know we have if you've been following my uh, walk for a while. And you can see that the whole place it has those deep cracks which go if I get a stick and poke it, you can see that it goes for 20, 30, 40, sometimes even deeper, 50 centimeters. All those cracks uh, get wider as the drought gets uh, worse. And then when we do get rain after all, here you can see how wide it is. And it continues way down. When we do get some rain, the whole soil swells up. This acts as a channel for infiltrating water deeper. And then the whole clay content swells up and starts to crumble this way, this way inwards. So our soil has this property. Um, I'm not sure of the exact word in English, but it translates as a self-tilling or self-turning because uh, in dry weather it cracks up and then the surface layers are migrating lower while the bottom 
layers are getting moved up by the swelling of the soil. And you can see that all through the orchard, and if we walk around, you'll see more in the uh, lawn. It has those deep cracks forming. And of course, we're not uh, forecasted to have any rain for at least two to three weeks more up to mid-September. So we're basically living in a state of drought. We'll be uh, seeing uh, maybe three months without uh, much rain. Last year it was the same and previous year it was wetter. But if you know how drought works, you will know that a couple of uh, wet months cannot have set a whole year of suboptimal uh, or abnormally low rainfall. But now, one of the side effects of the drought, besides purple poops all over the outdoor sink, is that the birds started pecking on our peaches. Miraculously or not, but peaches are one of the very few fruit trees which uh, kept fruit this year. I don't know if that was because they flowered uh, before the bad weather and then they had so much flower on them that even though 90% was dropped of the fruit set was dropped, there still remained a few dozen peaches. But now the birds are starting, starting to peck at the peaches because they sure look delicious. We already harvested a couple of kilos and ate some. And on some of the fruit, they will be probably possible to see, such as here, some pecking damage. And uh, I was doing the dishes indoors and just saw a small flock of blackbirds come here and peck at the fruit. So I decided to come out and start harvesting the peaches and see how much they are left. Because after those, we won't be having basically no summer or autumn fruit to harvest. So that's about it. Maybe 30 something peaches. They are of rather small size. It's uh, 120 to 150 grams per peach, probably. Uh, maybe half the size of last year's peaches, but then uh, we had uh, different conditions back then. And you can see that this one uh, demonstrate the perfect ripeness of a peach, which splits the skin open a bit when you harvest it off the branch. So that was all for today, folks, and I'll see you in the next one.